The following dramatic presentation is a work of fiction. It has been inspired by recent events in Newfoundland and elsewhere in Canada, but it is not a reenactment of any actual events. The characters, scenes, and dialogue in this drama are not intended to represent the actual personalities, actions, or words of any real people living or dead. My name is Detective Bowen of the Royal Nova Lack Constabulary. May I step in, please? Uh, yeah, uh, yes, certainly. Come on, in. Come on. Come on. I can help your mom. Come on. What's the problem? I have a warrant for your arrest, sir. You need not say anything. You have nothing to hold from any promise or favor, nothing to fear from any threat. You have the right to retain and instruct counsel without delay. Anything you say can be used as evidence. I have orders to bring you back to St. John's. Excuse me, this is ridiculous. I have not been in St. John's for uh, 10 years. Were you the superintendent of St. Vincent Orphanage in 1975? Sir, have you ever get your coat, please? Just hold on. What is the charge? Gross indecency, sexual assault, physical assault. I'm afraid you'll have to come with me, sir. Maybe you'll want to pack some things. Peter, what is Chantel, going on? Would you please uh, take the children into the kitchen? I have to pack. Sir, I'm sorry I had to accompany you to your room. Fine. No! Peter! What's going on? Peter, what is going on, please? Peter, answer me! I don't know what is going on. These gentlemen have come from Newfoundland. They tell me that I am under arrest and that I must accompany them, so I am packing. You can't come in here and arrest my husband! Where are you taking him? Take him back to St. John's, Miss Levin. Why, Peter? I don't know why! Will you pack, help the kids, or do something? For how long? I'm sorry, ma'am, I don't know. Thank you. 
Turn to your right. The other side. Good. Take him away. Where's Paul Stevens' office? It's over there. But do you have an appointment? Sir. Sir. You sent me this? It's all right, Janice. This thing says subpoena. It says I'm supposed to show up in court like some goddamn criminal. You can't force me to do this. Yes, I can. Recognize this? I have charged one Peter John Lavin with various crimes, based in part on that statement which you made. I intend to bring you into court and have you tell the judge that that is indeed your signature. did to you? You don't want to nail him? I don't believe it. Send me another piece of paper like this and I'll disappear, you understand? I will not go to court. Peter John Lev was arrested today on charges of sexual and physical assault. The offenses were allegedly committed against boys at the orphanage 15 years ago. Former Brother Lavin was very visible and popular in the community during his tenure. He is generally credited with being the dynamic force behind the expansion of the orphanage facilities, including the building of the St. Vincent Hockey Arena, home of the perennial city champs. Mr. Lavin lives in Montreal and is married with two children. As I was telling you before, Brother Lavin... I beg your pardon. Oh, excuse me. Mr. Lavin. Now, let me explain the options of a plea of guilty or not guilty. Don't bother. Not guilty. How much? Pardon? Cost, man, cost. I have a family, remember? Your fees are being taken care of. I thought you knew that. Now... I'm afraid I must return to the question of a plea. Listen to me. I'm innocent. I exercise discipline. I tried to shape young boys into responsible people. Now, the quicker you understand that, the better for both of us. Is that clear? Yes, of course. What do you think, callers? There we've got former Superintendent Lavin, brothers Glacken and Glynn, all picked up in a sweep, accused of unmentionable crimes against little youngsters. Helpless orphans entrusted to their care. You've heard the news. What do you think? V-O-C-P, the voice of the common people, is on the air. Give us a call. Line two, you're on the air. Morning, Lenora. My God, Gladys. Good to hear from you. I haven't heard from you in a long time. You're a stranger. Where have you been keeping yourself? Been off visiting my daughter in Toronto. 
Well, good for you. Yeah, just got back yesterday. Mm-hmm. And you can imagine my mm -hmm. shock. Now, I want to tell you, I've been a churchgoer and a good one sure. all my life. Well, and God love you for it, too, Gladys. I thank you, Lenore. Now, as I was saying, I don't believe a word of it. You're not buying any of it? No. No. Why, when I think of all the fine men in our community that have been saved by the brothers. Yeah, yeah. Well, I tell you, Lenora, it just makes me furious. There are so many people looking for any reason uh -huh. to bring down the Mother Church. Well, I hope you're right. God knows we hope you're right, Gladys. Police officials have confirmed the existence of signed witness statements dating back to the mid-70s. They were part of a criminal investigation of possible mistreatment of boys by All Saints Brothers at St. Vincent. Peter John Lavin, the former superintendent, pleaded not guilty on all seven counts of sexual and physical assault. One of the deepening mysteries of the case is why no charges were laid at the time of the original investigation. A preliminary inquiry is the next step in the legal proceedings, when the Crown will introduce evidence it hopes to convince the presiding judge It's open! You want to tell me about it? Hello, Kevin. How are you doing? Best kind, detective. Best kind. I heard about you not wanting to take the stand. You heard, right. Look, I got nothing to say to you. Listen, Kevin, you're not gonna get another chance. If you don't testify and Lavin walks now, well, he can't ever be charged again. Think about it. Think about it? You wanna know what I'm thinking about? I'm thinking, how could a big man, a big detective, do that to a little kid? You said you'd come back to see me. I did. Yeah, right. I'm telling you, I did. You'd already gone to live with your uncle. I haven't got an uncle. Well, that's what I was told. Who told you that? One of the brothers. And you believed him? I was in there till I was 16, for Christ's sake. Now, Mr. Noseworthy, that is the signature of Kevin Reavy, is it not? Yes, sir. It was signed in my presence, as you can tell from the signature underneath. Would you read that statement, please? Uh, the passage marked out at the bottom. He would make me sit on his lap. Sometimes he would take off my shirt, and sometimes he would take off all my clothes. And he would be kissing me and rubbing my private parts. The man who did these things to me is Brother Lab. No more questions, my lord. Now, these witness statements are 15 years old. Is that correct? That's right. Now, in this case, was an arrest ever made? No, but it should have. But it didn't. Your Lordship, no charges were laid when this complaint was first made. The criminal justice system, in its wisdom, presumably determined that there was not enough evidence. And what kind of criminal justice system <laughs> Is it that tells a police officer to doctor evidence? Now, what do you mean by doctor evidence? The chief told me to rewrite my report, taking out all references to sexual matters so that there could be no grounds for charges. He said that the orders came from the Justice Department. He said that a bunch of criminal politicians 
high church officials conspired to kill the proper course of justice. And why speak of it only now? I was told I'd be fired, charged under the police act if I said anything. You're saying there's not only evidence of criminal activity by the brothers, but there was also a cover-up as well? That's exactly right, and you just watch. They're going after the brothers now, and don't get me wrong. They should be brought to trial for what they've done. But what about the big shots, huh? You just watch. They'll weasel out of it somehow. Who are they? Who are they? Is it possible, callers? Is it possible that police and government officials, maybe even government ministers, knew about the dark deeds at the orphanage and covered them up? Well, now there's a royal commission starting up. Public hearing's about to take place. Will they get to the bottom of it? What do you think, callers? The boys were, in fact, wards of the state, placed in the care of the brothers at the orphanage by your department. Is that correct? Yes. And what was your responsibility? I was the social worker responsible for virtually all contact between the department and the orphanage. And how often did you visit the boys? Never. It was made clear to me that St. Vincent was not to be interfered with in any way. Who made this clear to you? It came from the director's office. I see. Check in, okay? All right. It's your first time in New Zealand, sir. Uh, no. You're here in business, then? Yeah, a bit of that. A lot of pleasure, too, I hope, though. So. You come to the right place for that, sir. Uh, speaking of which, do you get much in the way of, uh, snow here? You know what I mean? Well, there's one thing you can predict in New Zealand, sir, is you can predict nothing about the weather. No, 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 no. Snow. Uh, crystal snow? Huh? You know what I mean? Well, in the last month, sir, by the shovelful, if I know what you mean. By the shovelful, look at it. Indeed it did, sir. Uh, much left? All kinds of it. Yeah. <laughs> Brian! Jesus Christ. Good to see you, man. You hungry? Have anything you want. Waiter, bring that champagne. Got some celebrating to do. Me and bro here. Sit down, for Christ's sake. So how you been? Good. Married and kids. Yeah. I, I got to meet the wife, but thought we should, you know, see each other first and, uh, you know. So, uh, how you been? You hungry? Uh, waiter, bring this man a menu. Some place, huh? Yeah. Jesus Christ, you're looking good. So you're losing it, are you? What are you doing here? Nah, just spending the millions. Nah, just trying to score some dope. Found any ganja yet, waiter? Thank you kindly. Old times, huh? Jesus Christ. Finally got a nose hit. <laughs> really, though, what are you doing here? Ah, oh, the cops. They uh, made me an offer I couldn't refuse, you know? Yeah, free trip, nice hotel. Yeah, see me old brother. Take a stand, tell about Glacken. I did try and find you, you know. <laughs> you did, eh? When was that? I was in the goddamn place a few years of waiting for you. <laughs> Can't wait to go to Toronto. I'm too excited to get by. It's gonna take a while, you know? Yeah, I know. But I'm going sometime, right? What do you think? I'm gonna leave you in this goddamn place. No way. As soon as I get straight away, you're gone. You'll be all right. Just stay away from him, that's all. Forget it, right? What do you want? Waiter, where's that menu? Uh, no, it's all right. I, I eat. Well, cigar. Have a cigar. No, I don't smoke. Jesus, the clean life, huh? <laughs> so, uh, where you live out in the suburbs? I guess you call it that, yeah. <laughs> well, you got, um, you got pictures of the wife and kids? Yeah, yeah. Oh, let me see. Right so, what have I got? Nephews, nieces? Well, no, 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 don't tell me. Let, me. let me see the picture. There's the kids there. Ah, uh, that's great. There's Don in that one. <sighs> Family, huh? The records show that complaints of physical and sexual abuse at the orphanage 
were sent to your office. Can you confirm this? Well, yes. Did you act upon these complaints? Yes, as a matter of fact, I did. Can you tell the Commission what action was taken by your department? I believe I asked Mother Lavin to investigate and to report back to me. Now, hold it. You were the legal guardian of these boys, is that correct? Well, yes. And you're telling this Commission that as their guardian, with a sworn duty to look after their welfare, you asked one of the alleged abusers to investigate a crime he may have himself committed? Well, it, look, it might look like that in retrospect, but at the time it seemed the appropriate thing to do. Announcing the arrival of Flight 322. How is your family taking all of this? Are they bearing up? Find out when I get there, won't I? I would like to put your wife on the stand as a character witness. Absolutely not. I will not have my family dragged into this. And I can tell you that it is in your best interest to have people testify as to strength of your character, your psychological stability. I said no, didn't I? Well then, can I put you in touch with a psychiatrist? What for? To be able to bring in an expert witness who can say that you have undergone testing, and to speak to the court about your psychological makeup. You want someone to tell the judge that child molesters are type A, or that I'm type B, something like that. Something like that. Someone to probe my innermost thoughts, right? Fine. Excellent. I'll arrange for sessions to begin when you're home. Moi, j'avais mes patins encore. Tu sais, je marchais avec mes patins. Il est arrivé, tu sais, qu'est-ce qu'il fait? Il a enlevé mes patins. Mais c'était si long, puis il a tout enlevé mes patins. <rire> il s'en est venu à l'époque. Mais... Oh, Dad! Oh, hi, guys! How are you? I don't ever see you again. I'm sorry. Okay. Ah, what's going on there? Well, um, um, how about some chips, right? Okay. Oh, we'll be yeah. good. Uh, let's help Daddy now. Can I take it from us? Yeah. Uh, oh, okay, okay. Uh, there's uh, stuff in the suitcase for both of you. Both have your names on it, so don't argue, okay? Boy, come 
Come on, Kevin. It's all over the news. I mean, I know who Lavin is. Maybe it's better if we didn't see each other for a while. What? Take care of yourself, OK? Start by talking about yourself. Um, any particular aspect of myself you want to hear about? Or? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you my purpose. I don't want you to feel that I'm pulling you anywhere that, where you don't want to go. Okay? Tell me where you like. I think what ha what's happening to you now mm -hmm. has a certain meaning. And yeah. we might get into that meaning if we can put this present experience in the total perspective of your life. Uh, I didn't, um, I don't know my natural parents, for one thing. Um, I was raised in a series of foster homes, uh, three, between the ages of uh, three and nine. And you never had any other type of home? No, I went to the orphanage after the foster home, but no, I didn't have uh, any other type of home, no. I don't think it was damaging to me. I don't feel I was damaged by that. It okay. certainly made me a stronger person. I didn't have the benefits or the, uh, the, uh, the, the blanketing privileges of some of the kids uh, that uh, I was in the homes with. I mean, they grew up to be quite, uh, quite soft and needy. And you grew to be hard. No, I grew to understand life as it is, as a real situation, not something that you fantasize about. And you go to church after one thing I know. <laughs> I went back after I started going out with Donna. <laughs> you should have seen me. First time I've been inside a church since I left the orphanage. <laughs> I'm sitting there, right? And there's this priest up front. And he's talking about that part of the Lord's Prayer, you know, forgive us our trespasses as we forgive them that trespass against us. No friggin' way, Brian. That's exactly what I said. Forgive them bastards, no way. I stood right up and I walked out of that church. I thought I was gonna puke. I, I was just filled with this rage. Just wanted to kill one of them. Nothing too bad or too painful for the brothers, if you ask me. I know it. Then I started to think, what would I do if I met one of them? Glyn, say, or Lavin. Absolutely. I'd kill him. I'd kill him. No question. So then I went back to church to try and patch things up with Donna, and, and there's all this stuff about forgiveness again. And I thought, well... Maybe I could forgive them. If they were all dead. Exactly, boy. Now I'll forgive you, son of a bitch! But if I couldn't forgive him, then I knew I had to live with this rage. couldn't do that. I guess I started to see what they were talking about. I don't hate him anymore. Forgive and forget, huh?
trial of Brother James Glacken got off to a sensational start today with the testimony of a young man who told about visits made to his bed at night by the brother in charge of his dorm. The long-awaited trial of Peter John Lavin, the man who was in charge when the offenses were alleged to have occurred, will be next on the docket. At police headquarters, two more former uh, brothers were arrested and charged with helping boys at the end of Peter, mm -hmm. I'd like to see you in my office. Seven. Perfect. Catherine, mm -hmm. I'm going to need everything on hand for this afternoon. I'm going to need uh, current proposal, former proposals, and a whole thing. It's only temporary until all this is settled. Look. It was my expertise that got us this contract in the first place. Right? I'm the one who's given up family hours to dovetail the needs of the school board with the needs of the planning commission. Peter. I am the one who got the bloody ball rolling in the first place. Enough. You were suspended as of this minute. Whatever happened to innocent until proven guilty? Why the hell I am in the position I'm in, I don't know. I don't know. Let me explain something to you. In the orphanage, both as a kid and an All Saints brother, the day started early in the morning. You had something to do every minute of the day until you went to sleep. As a kid, you had an hour off or so to... Uh, Spend some time in the library, watch some television, play some pool. You got older, you got to play pool. As an All Saints brother, your day started two hours before and ended two hours later. And everything you did was for the kids. I mean, everything. Fundraising, coaching, teaching. Is it, is it okay for me to say you love these kids? Does that describe what you felt? Yeah. 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 So you like that stuff? Yeah. That's pretty cool, huh? Yeah. What do you think? You think your dad would let you wear that? Wear that to church? Maybe. <laughs> I somehow don't think so. Okay, Billy. This is what you gotta do. You go up for your first communion. Instead of going back, and sitting down with your parents again. What you gotta do is you gotta sneak back in line again and get it a second time. That's what I did. You're and I kidding. dare you. No, nope, no kidding, that's what I did. Swear to God. Okay? This is what I can dare you to do this, okay? All right? Think you can handle it? Yeah. Yeah? What do you think your folks will say about that? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> okay, time to go. No, it's not. Well, I think it might be. Uh, what do you got? <laughs> Well, they're, they're looking a lot cooler now, aren't they? Nice shirt. Thank you much. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Come on. Take your shirt in. All right, Billy. Nice one. Remember what I said. In 1975, you were the Minister of Social Services, is that correct? That's correct. Now, we've heard a lot of testimony about reports from within your own department. 
Can you tell me what your knowledge of these events is? I'm afraid I can't tell you anything. The first I heard of it was when this thing hit the papers this past year. You never heard about the police investigation? Never. You never heard about complaints from within your own department? Never. Were you aware that most of the boys in the orphanage were placed there by officials from your own department? Of course I knew that. But as far as I knew, the boys were lucky to be there. I thought the brothers were doing a fine job. Did you ever discuss this with the Premier? How could I? I told you. I never heard anything. I missed you, you know. Missed you too. Bon, ben maman va te donner un gros bec. Tu tu bien y dormir? Oui? Je peux-tu avoir un bec, moi? Mmh. Ben, dors bien, mon gars. C'est autour de papa. Kids come home crying. Things are being said to them in school. What things? What do you think? Peter, 
I don't know what to think anymore. You never talked about the orphanage. Why not? Because it was a nightmare, Chantal. There were false accusations then. There are false accusations now. That's why I left the order. You left because of accusations? But you told me you left because you could no longer maintain your vows. That's right. I said I could no longer maintain the vow of obedience to simply, humbly, and joyfully obey. But there was something wrong going on while you were in charge. I was the superintendent. Um, some blame fell on me. They, they said I should have known. Did you? Uh, no. and in bad, remember? Can you describe me very minutely? How was she to you when you first met her or the first times you met her? And just, just describe how you feel. Safe. Safe. Yeah. She made me feel, I think, uh, safe. If I, yeah, there was a trust. There was um, a response to me, you know. There was a, a romance, you know, kind of like a, And, um, well, one thing led to another, and... Uh, uh, We got married. And then? 
And then um, a year after we got married, we decided to uh, have children. So we had children. We had uh, two children right away. Antoine was the first, and Eric was the second. And it was an incredible thing having my own uh, child, you know, because I had never had natural parents, you know. And there was these two things that were mine, you know. Um, and they were uh, just oh, open and um, mm. so I wanted to give them, you know, what uh, what uh, you know I missed. So um, Some spaghetti with no. washed again, you know? Have a few beer? No, it feels good. It's kind of weird. Yeah, I guess you don't need a beer here. <laughs> no, beer's good. It's bar right there if you want some. No, that's okay. It goes all on um, on the bill if you want. You want some? I'm just going out. You want it, are you? Yep. That's just some oh, stuff. That's good. That's good. That's just some stuff. Yeah. There's some stuff I got. Yeah. It's, you know, it's hard. It's really hard. What's hard? You no, know, it's hard. It's hard stuff. And it's, um, it's good. It's good. Does, it's um, good. It's hard. It's yeah, good. It's, it's hard. Good. It's hard. Hard. hard and stuff. Um, <clears throat> I gotta go out. I really gotta get outside. You know? Well, you know, maybe we can go for a walk later or something. You know, I'll take you out in the car. We'll go for a drive. You could get over the house. <laughs> you could run a few of it right now. See if I care. Go buy some more dope on Water Street, like the rest of the boys. Hello, it's, yeah, it's me. No, I came by and he, uh, he's gone out somewhere. No, I don't know. I don't know where. All right, I'm just coming home. I'll see you. Now, Chief Kennedy, did you meet with Monsignor Fuoco concerning this matter? Concerning this matter? 
No, I, I don't think so. Well, I can't be sure now, though. Uh, I've had some trouble with my memory, particularly around that period of time uh, since my operation. Pardon me? Well, you say, ma'am, I had an operation a few years back? A prostate operation. I've had trouble with my memory ever since. <laughs> Um, what about ordering former Detective Noseworthy to alter a police report by removing sexual references? No, ma'am, not that I can recall. Well, it does seem unbelievable, doesn't it, callers, that a man who willfully let child molesters go free, a man who by his own admission is suffering from severe brain damage, was once the person who ran the police department in this town. Here he is, he claims to have had an operation, and now he can't remember a thing. Boy, oh boy. Do you believe him? Give us a call, let us know how you feel. We got somebody on the air, we got somebody on line two. Go ahead, line two, you're on the air. I certainly don't believe him, Lenora, they're all lying. Why look at these high, holy brothers, they all say they're not guilty. That's true. You know what I think, Lenora? Uh, no, but I got a feeling you're gonna tell me. Sex, Lenora, sex. That's what it's all about. The church won't well. allow them to have sex. Now, you take a bunch of priests and you lock them away with these young boys, well, what do you expect is gonna happen, huh? Well, you certainly have strong views on it, caller, and thanks very much for sharing them with us. And I'd been celibate up to this point. Sex was terrifying for me. Um, which is one of the reasons I went into the All Saints Brothers as well, you know, I just you didn't have to deal with it. What, or what was in the way? Fear. Okay, fear of? I don't know, fear of loving, I don't know. No, don't move away from, from where you are, inside. What do you feel now? I feel like hell. I had a family. Now I have a bunch of enemies. in a fight. Our leg hurts. Oh, yeah? Well, hold on now. Have you got any broken bones? No. No way. Well, I'm going your way. Do you want to ride home? Okay. I wanted to hold him. His neck looked so soft, so young and perfect. I felt aroused, Father, alive in my groin. I wanted to feel his warmth and tenderness. I wanted to feel the rush of release. Did you touch him? No. I 
have you had these desires before? Not for a long time. What did you do then about these desires? I sinned, Father. So you were aware that some of the boys had suffered abuse. Is that correct? Yes, and uh, I could tell you it was a tremendous shock. And what did you do about them? I beg your pardon? The boys, Monsignor. Did it occur to you that some of them might need counseling? I've told you it was a long time ago. None of us knew then what we know now about the effects of these things. I thought that the boys would be best served by not putting them through any more embarrassment. And are you aware that some of the brothers who remained in the orphanage after the police investigation was shut down in 1975 are now charged with criminal acts of sexual abuse against those same boys? Yes, I am. And it pains me greatly. Now, what about Brother Lavin? What about him? Well, were you aware that the police had evidence against him as well? Certainly not. A lying bastard! He's lying to your face! You lying bastard, Monsignor! <clears throat> just tell the truth! Go out of your way to tell the truth! You can go to hell, Monsignor! Go to hell with your brothers! Go to hell! If there is any further disruption, I will close this hearing to the public. Proceed, Counselor. Now, getting back to Brother Lavin, wasn't he shipped out as well? I wouldn't put it that way. Wasn't that part of the deal? After all, a million dollar grant was at stake. There was no deal. I've told you. Brother Lavin got a well-deserved rest. That's all. As for the other two brothers, I was only following instructions. Whose instructions were you following? Jerome Ward. The Deputy Minister of Justice, who died five years ago. Unfortunately. You never talked to anyone else? I did not. So the dead guy did it. Is that it, Lenora? Well, boy, that's the way it looks, doesn't it? Because so far, the only government official who's been implicated, uh, the only government official who anybody can remember being at any meetings any time, for those people who can remember anything at all, was the uh, the deputy minister of justice, the late, the very late uh, Jerome Ward. My dear, if only the dead could talk. Ain't that the truth? What tales they would tell. Yeah, well, we got to move on now, caller. Um, go ahead, line two, you're on the air. Who are they going to call next, Lenora? That's what I want to know. Well, they might just as well call the Ghostbusters, as far as I'm concerned, what? scared out of my mind before I went in there. I just answered the questions, though. There's nothing to it, really. Where do you live now, Stephen? In uh, Toronto. Uh, are you employed? What do you work at? Well, I'm looking for a job. That's what I was doing before I, I came down. Aren't you on welfare, Stephen? And have been for the past few years? Yeah, uh, now and then. Sure, Jesus, what else are you going to do? i got to eat, boy. Just the answer, Stephen. Uh, do, you, do you have a criminal record? Yeah, a few small things. <laughs> Break and entry, assault, possession of illegal drugs, drunk driving. These are not small things, Mr. Lenny. Are you a male prostitute, Stephen? It's because I see here four arrests for male prostitution. Objection, my lord. It's OK. I'll withdraw the question. Now, Stephen, you uh, stayed at the orphanage for, let's see, six more years. Is that correct? I don't know. Well, let me put the question another way. The records I have show that you left the orphanage at age 16. Is that correct? Yeah. Good. When you were 15 and 16, 
Do you remember a boy by the name of Alfred Langston? I, I don't know. How about Joseph Calvin? Jeremy O'Toole? Oh, God, let me help your memory. Uh, you were 15. They were about seven or eight. You were fully grown. You were half your height, came up to your waist. Does that help, Mr. Lang? No, this is not true. Did you force them to perform sexual acts upon your person, Stephen? Do you remember? In the downstairs bathroom. Does that help your memory? Or on the back fire escape? You've accused my client of sexual abuse, Stephen, when you know that you are the criminal, and I have witnesses to prove it. You've lied, Stephen, and I can prove it. Fifteen years ago, you told the police that Brother Glacken never touched you. Now, are you lying then, or are you, are you lying now? Which is it? Maybe you're just a liar. Answer the question. My lord, could we have a short recess, please? All right. Fifteen minutes. halt today at the trial of brother James Glacken, when a former resident was accused of sexually abusing younger boys at the orphanage. The fact that the young man has a long criminal record, including prostitution convictions, was also brought out under cross-examination. The trial of brother Glacken is expected to resume tomorrow. Jesus, what a circus. You should go see him, Kevin. I mean, you could probably use a friend now, you know? So now you're going to start telling me what to do. I didn't mean it like that. It's just, I mean, how would you feel having those things said about you? What do you know, the expert or something? He always was a little hustler. Come on, Kevin. I'm just trying to help. Don't take it out on me. Don't take what out on you, huh? Well, I don't care what you say. At least he stood up and tried to do something about it. I think you should too, Kevin. I mean, you can't let that criminal get away with it. Not after what he did to you. What do you know about what he did to me? I don't care about what he did to you. I care about what it's doing to you now. Now look, Sheila. No, you look. It's eating you up, Kevin. Look at yourself. I mean, the way you wake up at night, you, you go punch some guy in a bar. You're afraid when we're having sex. Come on, Kevin, you know it's true. I don't think you even enjoy it. I'm warning you, Sheila. You're what? You're warning me? What, Kevin? What are you going to do? You're going to punch me out because I'm trying to help? Just leave me alone, okay? No, I won't leave you alone. Sheila, there's no way for you to understand what all this means. Oh, man, that's hardly fair. Fair? Who said anything about fair? I know too goddamn well what fair means. Is it fair that after all these friggin' years, just when I'm starting to put all that shit behind me, I'm supposed to come out smiling? and get on camera and say, oh, yeah, that's the fella. That's the guy who used to grab me by the back of the neck and haul me into his office and make me sit on his lap while he put his hands down my pants and started groaning? Is there anything else you want to know? Isn't it ironic that on the very day that this city is gripped by the tragic death of young Stephen Lunny, who died from an overdose, 
that on this very day, a jury returned with a verdict of guilty on eight counts of sexual assault and indecent exposure against brother James Glacken, the very man who tortured poor Stephen when he was a little boy at the orphanage. Go ahead, line four. You're on the air. Quelque chose d'autre qu'on peut regarder. Oui. On peut regarder le tableau. Le tableau. Nous regardons le tableau. Répétez. Nous regardons le tableau. Oui. Merci. Go ahead. Don't be shy. Come on, come on. What is this? Show us. Un cré... Excusez-moi. Vous allez prendre une note de ce qui a été écrit au tableau. Stephen's dead. Oh my God. <gasps> We're gathered here today say farewell to our brother in Christ, Stephen Lunny. Would you please join me in the Lord's Prayer? Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, for thine kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Lord, receive the soul of Stephen Lunny, and present him to God on high, and give him eternal life, Lord, and may your light shine on him forever. Amen. Sheila. That one there. You can always do what she tells you. I'm working on it. <laughs> now you try to set an example, okay? I will, I will. All right. First, I gotta say a couple of words to me. Old long lost buddy Kevin here. How's she going, boy? Listen. Don't do it. Don't go on that stand. I could have done this to Maybe. Maybe none of this would have happened if they just left him alone or whatever he was at up there in Toronto. I was there, boy. I seen what they done to him. They ripped him apart. They spreaded him out for all friggin' world to look at. For the record, what was your position in 1975? I was Minister of Justice at the time. Were you aware of a police investigation concerning St. Vincent Orphanage? No. I never heard about it. Your department ordered the Chief of Police to shut down that investigation. Do you know about that? I was never informed. Many people assume that as minister, you must have known about such a potentially explosive matter. 
That's because they don't know how government works. Did you ever discuss this matter in Cabinet? You know perfectly well that I am bound by an oath of Cabinet secrecy. I can only repeat, I knew nothing. Of course. I'm upstairs. What's going on? I had to take the children out of school, Peter. I won't have them put through any more of this. What are you talking about? I've sent them to my mother's. I will not have my children taken away from me, Chantal. Well, they can't stay here. You've got to go back there, and I'm coming with you. Oh, no, you're not. Yes, I am. No, you are not. I am. Chantal, you are not coming with me, and that is final. I've made all the arrangements. And I see for myself. And Al, I would love to have you come with me, but your place is here with them. Peter, I'm coming. Avec ou sans toi. times and bad. Remember? Thinking about laughing. But how scared I was. afraid of you. In what sense? I'm afraid of me. Don't hurt me, okay? Don't hurt me. I promise. I promise. I won't hurt you. There's 
one thing you can do for yourself. Yeah. Okay? You as a grown man, as an adult, as a strong grown man, you can go down in, inside and you can meet this little boy that you were, who was longing for somebody. carried this longing all your life. Yeah. Announcing the arrival of flight 322 from Montreal. He's supposed to be here somewhere. Peter. George, how are you? Good to see you again. Good to see you. Uh, George uh, Stoney, this is uh, Chantal. Chantal George Stoney. Stoney. Yeah. 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 Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Peter. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Please. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Please. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our Tell death. Tell me. Amen. What will I hear Hail in Mary, that courtroom Christ, tomorrow? The Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Peter. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed I art think thou amongst women, and I can understand. Is the fruit of womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, I think full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou. I can forgive. But you've got to tell me, what have you done? State your name, please. Kevin Reavy. Do you swear that the evidence you shall give to the court shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? So help you God. I do. I have here a police witness statement I'd like you to look at. The signature on the bottom, Mr. Reavy. I ask you now, is that your true signature made by your own hand? Yes, it is. If you go back to the top of the document, sir, I'd like to ask you a few questions as we go through the statement. Do you remember giving this information to Detective Noseworthy? I do indeed. And are you prepared to tell this court what was done to you? I am. Fine. I'll uh, give you a moment to read through the statement. I'd like to start with the night of December 7th. That was the night you ran away from the orphanage and were brought back by the police. Do you remember that incident? Yes, I do remember. And when the police brought you back, who did they hand you over to? Brother Lavin. Could you tell this court what happened to you then? He told me to wait in his office. And I went down the hallway and 
He was talking to the cops all friendly like. And then I was waiting there. And he came in and closed the door. And then he told me to come over and sit on his lap. Like he always did. What happened next? I took off my shirt and he was kissing me on the neck and on the shoulders. And he was saying that he was my mother. I told him that he wasn't my mother and that my mother was dead. And then he beat me. Mr. Reavy, our records show that you were 10 years old when this incident took place. Would that be correct? Yes. And the man who did these things to you, is that man here in this courtroom today? He is. Would you point him out for the court, please? Let the record show that the witness identified the defendant. Now, this wasn't the first time that you were sexually assaulted by Brother Levin, was it? No. No, I used to be his boy. When did it start? Not long after I went into the place. Do you remember the first time? Yes. Could you tell us about it, please? The first time was in the pool. Do you remember how it started? It was Easter, and all the other ones were gone to visit, so... I went to him and asked him how come I couldn't go out anywhere. Because I was alone. I wanted to know how come I didn't have an uncle or an aunt or anyone who would come and see me and take me out. I mean, I remembered mom and dad in the funeral, so I knew I was an orphan, but I got to thinking I must have some family. I went to see Brother Lavin. He was real nice to me after that. We went swimming. We were alone in the pool, and I remember we were having a good time. He was throwing me up in the air. And I would splash down. But then suddenly he was holding me and pressing me against him. And he took off my bathing suit. And he took off his bathing suit. And he was pressing me against him. What did he do next? He was rubbing himself against me. And I felt him get hard. He was trying to force this thing inside me. I remember I was crying because it hurt so much. It seemed to go on for a long time. He was moaning and groaning, and finally he stopped. And after that, I became his boy. And he would have me called to his office.
would like to speak to my husband. Of course. I'll be outside. Didn't you feel anything listening to that testimony? Yes, I did. I felt what a martyr I'd been all my life. First to those lying little bastards and now to you. You feel no guilt? No shame? Kevin Reavy was a lonely little boy whom I befriended out of the kindness of my heart. I loved him. Loved him? You call that love? Yes, I do. <laughs> no. That is not loving. That is hurting. You have hurt this little boy. I could kill you. I am going to ask this only once. Have you ever touched our children? Why don't you ask them yourself? They're your children. That's right. They're my. They're no longer your children.
Christ, Christ, Christ.